I'm Stuart Childs, and I have no notes for my talk, so this is going to be freestyle. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about um, controlling a CNC milling machine with Beelbone Black and Machine Kit. Um, and to start off with, I'm going to tell you a bit about myself. I like laser cutting quite a bit. That's something I do a lot. Um, and it's the my, it, that was my first foray into CNC-ing, I guess, and sort of going from computer to controlling a machine and moving things around. So I enjoy laser cutting quite a bit. I also, after having done that for a while and laser cutting a lot of acrylic and wood, got drawn in to milling. Um, I mean, just look at those metal chips flying off there. Look how cool. <sighs> Uh, uh, so th this is kind of like th this thing for me was like metal is so real. It's kind of it's, it's a real solid thing. I mean, acrylic is quite brittle and wood can burn, and as can acrylic. But yeah, metal was quite a draw for me. Um, and so this this idea of oh yeah, so CNC milling, CNC machining, that's that's great. And I really wish I could see my notes, but I'm just going to have to go with it. Um, this is the mill. Slightly less cool than the other one. I mean, that one looks pretty cool. It's got a massive, massive bit there. It's got maybe it's, that could be squeezing some lubricant out or blowing those chips away with some compressed air. That's a really nice machine. It's probably a fairly expensive machine. This is the one that we got hold of. Um, I'm going to say we quite a lot in this talk, and it's not the royal we. Um, it's the we as in my friends and I, so Matthew Venn, who was at the previous talk and in the slide before, and some of you may have heard of some guy called Andrew Back. Um, he's the owner of this machine, and he's the one that's responsible for me, well, letting me adapt it. Now, handily, the axes on these machines are labelled. That's the x-axis. This is a three-axis milling machine. There we go. Um, which is great, because that makes it lots easy to kind of see what you're doing. If you, you're going from an on-screen design to controlling a machine, um, it's just really nice to have those labels. There's some machines that don't, and it makes it really, uh, really annoying. Um, with milling, this, this, this milling machine, we have this bed moves in the X and Y, like that. And then the Z, the... the, the <coughs> the spindle or the, or the head moves up and down. Um, so we have a, a sacrificial bed on this machine. This is a piece of MDF. Um, and we have this here in case we want to cut something out. And we, have our, we would clamp our work piece onto this bed. So these, these clamps here um, would allow us to maybe clamp a big lump of metal or a big lump of wood onto the bed. The bed will move around, um, and the head moves up and down. So that's the head there. Um, we've got the, this big green part at the top that moves up and down. This, this e the thing that says easy change on, um, that's a, 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 tool, uh, oh, a, a tool holder and that allows you to easily remove the milling bits. And the milling, the milling bit on this is there, just about there. Uh, and that's a, it's about two millimetres diameter, so it's not the biggest milling bit in the world. Um, we do have slightly larger ones for this machine, but we, when we started out, we thought, ah, oh, let's just go for a nice, nice small one. Incidentally, using a, a small milling bit like that can lead to breakages. If you're too um, forceful with it, if you start moving your lump of metal around too quickly with a very small two millimeter milling bit in it, it can snap, which gets annoying rather quickly. This is a slightly fancier CNC milling machine. I think this probably has six or seven axes and it, it looks a bit more like a robotic arm than a traditional mill. Um, and this allows for some really quite funky, I guess that's maybe prototype, maybe that's doing it out of kind of a, a foam or a, may, it might be being used to then ca make the mold for, for, for casting, or maybe that's just kind of for prototyping, but that gives you an idea of the the stuff you can make with a, a, a multi-axis machine when you get to sort of four, five, six axes, that kind of thing. Now, milling machines used to look a bit like this. I really like this picture. It just <laughs> looks so dangerous. Can you imagine this going on today? So 
big handles. These handles would move the axes. And this, this, is, this, this is the mill operator. That's the guy that, that knows what he's doing. And presumably, he's working from a drawing or from memory, perhaps. But I really like the, I mean, look at, yeah, the look of that machine. It just looks dangerous. I mean, it looks like a mean business. So that's, that's what they, they used to look like. And you can retrofit these old machines. So I, I, I mean, this was put together yesterday. And this was utilizing the, the internet to find lovely pictures. I, I really like the way that the, he's, this, the guy that, presumably guy, let's say, the person that, that changed this has left the handles on. Uh, that's really nice. He's got some really quite serious motors. It's a, it's a big machine, but um, I, I wish, I kind of like the idea that, that when this machine's working, the handles also spin round. I don't know if maybe there's a decoupling mechanism going on, but it might be quite, again, dangerous to be near when it's running. But, but th th this, what I wanted to get at with this is, this, is taking the, the manual milling machine. Okay, so we've got the bed here again. We can move the bed in an X and Y. And it looks like the bed lifts up on this one rather than the head going up and down. Um, but you can take an old machine and you can retrofit it with, with motors. So, that, so that, that's great. The machine that we worked on was, was built as a CNC machine from the start. So there's no handles. And we've got, compared to the last one, relatively small motors. There's just that one there compared to the size of the other guys, the other person's one. He's got some fairly serious motors on there. Now, to control these motors, we don't have a, a mill operator, like in the black and white photograph. Um, we, ha we have computers. Um, and this is, this is a wonderfully modern example um, with paper tape reading down here. Uh, so you'd feed your, um, your instructions, which most CNC machines run off uh, the, the programming language is, is known as G-code, and it, it's widely used. It was standardized a long time ago, I think maybe sort of 50s, 60s, and it's evolved, and there are some slight variations. Um, but most machines will run on some form of G-code. Um, and and so that, that's like a, a, an early example of a, of a computer that would be used to control uh, a, a CNC milling machine. You've got a... Yeah, got presumably a green screen and there'll be a bit of information on there and you'll be able to position the bed and, and move, move the bed around but the, the, the interface will have been you'll, you'll know your machine before you use it um, now in the, the era of single board computers um, we can do we can do the computer control of a CNC milling machine much more easily um, this is a BeagleBone Black, for those that don't know. It's a single board computer. It will run Linux. Um, it's got HDMI out. It's got a load of GPIO. Um, the really interesting thing about the BeagleBone Black is it has on board um, two, two things called PRUs, which are, I think stands for Programmable Real-Time Unit. So the great thing about those is if we want to use a computer, to control motors for a CNC milling machine or a CNC machine of any sort. Those motors require quite strict timing. And so if you want to control those without missing uh, steps on your stepper motors and losing position, um, you want to have rock solid timing. And you can't do that with a s standard um, Linux kernel. Um, you either have to patch uh, a cust custom Linux kernel and, bu and build one, which is a, like a real time flavor. Um, or you can use a custom image for this ARM chip, which makes use of the PRUs, the program with more real-time units, and they'll deal with all the complicated and, and solid timing stuff. Just as a disclaimer, in a room full of, well, more than average uh, Linux enthusiasts and hardcores, uh, I am not a programmer and not an electronics engineer, so just kind of a disclaimer on the talk. And it was also a few months ago that I did this project, so it's kind of digging it up. But the cool thing about yeah, so the cool thing about the BeagleBone is it's a single board computer. It's tiny. We can fit it in the control box for the milling machine. It has the the real time stuff on board, um, and it also comes with a series of um, capes, which I can't see. It comes with a series of things they call capes, which are like a, 
if people are familiar with Arduinos, they have this thing called shields, like an add-on, like an add-on board, basically, which gives you um, different um, inputs and outputs. There we go. So we've got the BeagleBone Black here, and this is one of this is the, this is the uh, the BrainCat board or the Cape, um, a company called Probotics. Um, and what this does is it first of all gives you protection between the the BeagleBone Black, the sort of sensitive electronics on the big robot in black, and then the big dirty motors that we've got on the, on the CNC machine. Um, it also gives you a range of nice terminals that you can use. Um, and the, great th the really nice thing about that is, again, you can get it, and uh, it, it, you don't have to do any soldering. You just plug it in together, and you know it's going to work. And, you know, and it's designed for uh, CNC control, so that you know, it makes it really easy. So in our system, we've got, let's take a bit of an overview, we've got the, co the computer here, and we've got our milling machine. And we want to connect our computer to the milling machine, and we want to get it to be, to be driving the axes around. Originally, the milling machine came with um, a, a rusty old uh, RM box. It, I think it's at, it was out of a school. It had proprietary software controlling it, um, and... The PC looked like it had been stored out. It was rusty. It didn't power on. And kind of, it was to the point where, like, right, let's get rid of the old control PC. Let's not bother trying to find out the software that should control the machine. Let, let's, let's rip all that out and then go with the BeagleBone Black. Um, so we've got the BeagleBone Black, but we can't connect it directly to the, the machine. So the first thing we want in the, in the, in the chain is, the, is this, this cape or, or breakout board. Um, the next thing we need to go in between the, the breakout board and the, and the, the machine are uh, stepper drivers. So the motors, most common motors for CNC machines are stepper motors. Um, some use servos as well, but steppers seem to be more commonly used. They're cheaper, they're more reliable. Um, we did have stepper drivers in the control cabinet um, of the of the milling machine when it came, but they were very, um, they were on a board that was quite intertwined with the, the proprietary sort of interface that, with the old computer, so we, we ditched all that and we got these fancy new stepper drivers um, from RS, which were very nice to work with. Again, lovely terminals, lots of documentation available, so they were super simple to connect up. And we had three of those, that, so that was, that's how, that was our XYZ. So now we've got the, we've got the, the computer, um, the computer's protected, it connects to the stepper drivers, the stepper drivers connect to the motors, now we can move the axes around, that's great. The next thing we had to do is spin the spindle. So we've got our computer, we've, we can move the axes around, that's fine. We want to spin the spindle as well, the, the bit that holds the, the, milling, the milling bit. Um, Down here is the existing spindle drive board that was in the control box. Now that expects 0 to 10 volts as, a, as, as the, the control for the speed of the milling bit. Um, but we were getting 0 to 5 volts out from the, um, the computer, the BeagleBone. So we got this thing in the top left, the spindle V5 board. Um, there's a guy in the UK somewhere that's making those, and that will take the 0 to 5 volts in. It'll opto-isolate it um, and give you 0 to 10 volts out. We've got about 100 odd, 100 odd volts on here to control the motor. And we don't want that to go back into the beagle bone. Um, I did that a while ago on an old board and, and we broke it. So that, the opto-isolation fix is there. So, that, so that's what allows us to, to control the spindle. Um, so if we now go back to our lovely simple system diagram. Um, that's, that's kind of what we had to do to, to give us control from, from the beagle bone um, to, the, to the CNC mill. So let's have a, look a bit, bit of a look at the hardware. That's the rusty old PC unit that came with it, and that's the machine. That's this, we, we had to take this cover off, and we never really got around to putting it back on. Yeah, it was a big lump of plastic and it just made it 
really difficult to access any of the bits. You can't really see, but down here, this is the ori original control cabinet that housed the, the electronics um, for the machine as well. So in there, um, we'll take a quick look inside there, but that's what had the original stepper drivers and the, the interface between the computer and those. Yeah, there we go. So it was a really nice box to work in. It was great. It was, I think it's 1995. It was made by a company called Denford, who are based in Brickhouse, which is not very far in our direction. Uh, and opening up the cabinet was great. There was DIN rail in there. We could, we, and there was space to add extra stuff. So we could put something in here. We had a bit of room there. Um, all of the wires were labeled, which was fab. Not only were they all labeled, but we had schematics and we had documentation provided by Denford online. And they also have a forum, which is great. They have their staff advising you how to hack and modify their machines that are 20 years old. And they have no qualms in doing that. That's, and I think that's great. That, you know, that's really, they're aware that people might not want to use their old software or their old computers. They're aware people are going to get hold of these machines. These machines you can get for 700 quid, 800 quid online on everyone's favorite auction site. Um, and they're really good quality. Um, and one of the, <laughs> the th it was a bit of like pressure working on something this nicely laid out in that it made me up my game in terms of wiring things and in terms of getting everything in the right, right place because I wanted it so, and, and making notes so that if people went back to what I'd done, they could be maybe see what, see what bits I'd changed and, and make sense of it rather than what quite often happens is just wires everywhere. 50 of the same colored wire attached to the same circuit board. Um, this was the original um, motor control. So this is a nice big lump of aluminium that was mounted into the board. It's all labeled nicely, lots of inputs and outputs. This um, dealt with the commands from the computer to the um, driving of the stepper motors and things like limit switches and home switches on the axes. This board sat on, this, on top of this board, on this row of pins here. Um, now, I have <coughs> modified another one of these machines, and what I did was retained this board and flew wires directly from a parallel port onto, onto here to, to get to you. Well, I think these are the stepper drivers here. So I kept this board because it had power on it, uh, and it had the stepper drivers which allow you to drive the, the motors. Um, but it wasn't that elegant, really. Um, I mean, it, 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 kind of, it kind of worked, but it, it wasn't super, super elegant, and I, didn't, I couldn't really afford the fancy stepper drivers that we could buy for this project. Um, so <laughs> it's quite nice just to see all that stuff, but I got rid of those two boards. Um, but what I did keep is this nice lump of aluminium, because it was already cut. It fit into the control cabinet. Um, and it, it also acted as a bit of a heat sink for, for these drivers. Now, I think these are rated up to about 7 amps, and we, we ended up only setting them at about 1.6 or 2 or something like that. So they're not <coughs> going to, they haven't got warm yet, but it was nice to just mount them on that big lump of aluminium. Um, there, so that was ready to go in. There it is in. So, yeah, so I also discovered for the first time these, I'm going to call them ferrules, ferrules. Um, that was a really nice way of. You crimp them onto the end of wires that you've chopped, um, and then they're really nice and tidy, and they'll just go into these into the screw terminals um, and make it neat. Um, so that's the stepper drivers there, and then this is the the breakout board from the beagle bone. So these are all going. So that's X, Y, and Z axis going into here. Um, the because the BeagleBone Black has the HDMI out, um, Cat5 and USB, we made this uh, plate to go uh, on, the, on the outside of the cabinet. Um, that just meant that we could access the ports easily without having to open it um, when the machine's running. Which meant we got to bop massive big holes in the side of this metal cabinet, which again was great fun. Um, sadly, don't have any pictures of it, but that was just marking it out. Um, 
so there's, there's the nice thing about this project was there's kind of there was a mixture of the the software and the hardware and then you get getting hands dirty and putting holes in big lumps of metal and then wiring things up and hoping they don't go bang um, incidentally that's lots of notes taken along the way and calculations made and checks and double checks I said before Denford provided lots of schematic and schematics and sort of di diagrams of the, the cabinet um, which is great it really helped um, apart from there's about five or six different revisions of this particular machine and control cabinet so sometimes it was detective work it wasn't just reference um, and that's slowed things down but it, it, it you know, you can't fault them for providing enough information. Um, now, this shows us the spindle control uh, um, in place. So, that's the existing board there. Um, that's the uh, board that goes in between the big and black, does the 0 to 5 uh, conversion to 0 to 10. That's it, it's there. Uh, it's wide down to there. Um, we also had, once we'd got the sort of motors wired in and we could move the machine around which was great um, nothing had started smoking yet uh, we this is a limit uh, actually a home homing switch so has a homing switch on each axis this is just in in there um, and what this allows you to do is um, once you turn the machine on you can tell it to go to its datum point which is kind of its zero 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 and these homing switches if they're wired in back into the beagle bone as inputs um, that will allow you to do that and the machine will go to a, a known homing point. Um, it doesn't have limit switches on the other end of the axis, um, but this is, you can set the dimensions of the machine in, in software. So you can say, I'm 200 mil wide. If I know where home is, you're not going to go past the end. Um, okay. um, so let's quick look at the software then. This machine kit, machine kit is a fork of Linux CNC. Linux CNC has been around for uh, quite a while. Um, machine kit... I don't know, I think it's quite young, 2014 maybe. Um, cool thing is, it will run on ARM as well as x86. Um, they say here, you can control not just machine tools, but quad rotors, robots, or you. I really hope that no one does that. And I, I mean, I haven't seen them do anything but being used for CNC machines, but it's pretty cool. And they have a really nice community that's active. Um, there's regular commits to their GitHub and their mailing list or their, their Google group is responsive. They'll get back to you. Um, it's based on Debian, and that's it's quite confusing because I've done stuff with Linux CNC before. This is Machine Kit, and it still has Linux CNC as their sort of default thing. So it's slowly being all moved over. Um, machine Kit, Linux CNC. It's quite awkward. I sometimes refer to it as Linux CNC rather than Machine Kit. Um, but that's the sort of interface you get in software once you've got it all working. Um, it wasn't sim super simple plug and play though. We did have some issues um, and we had to get some help from the HAL. Um, but this, in this sense, it's, it's the hardware abstraction layer, um, which is great. It's, oh, wow. So we've done all the wiring physically. We've wired our outputs from our breakout board to our stepper drivers and then in turn to the motors. But we need to do all the, the wiring in software as well and, and tell the software what to expect and what, what GPIOs to use. And that's what the, the HAL file does. It's a text file. You edit the text file. You can configure machine kit or Linux CNC and completely tail it, tailor it to your hardware, which is fab. I mean, that, that's one of the things that makes machine kit or Linux CNC so usable. I mean, you go in, you, you edit a text file, and then you, you, you can get it working. Um, so we got it working. Um, you get a readout X, Y, Z. You can you can move a machine round, and you know that's that was great. That that was it's such a to go from a, a dead machine with a rusty computer and a, a few circuit boards, and then having to connect them all up and trying to mash it all together, and then getting to the point where you've got software running and you can use your arrow keys to move this dangerous-looking spinning metal thing around um, and then you get to that point and you're like really excited and I finished all this stuff and then you get into the what I'm going to call the world of CNC which is whew, like pfft, you can speak to people who used to work uh, as production manufacturers and they know how to w use a machine and they know what to listen for and they know 
what to expect, and they know how to use things like this, which is a dial gauge, um, which is a very, it measures things, I think it's hundredths of, hundredths of a millimeter, um, which is quite small, uh, and this allows you to calibrate the machine. So we use this, once you've got your hardware and software set up and you say, right, I'm, I'm, I want the software to move the bed half a millimeter this way and then half a millimeter that way, you can use the dial gauge to make sure that it's doing what it's saying. Um, and quite often there'll be small tweaks you'll need to make um, to, to make sure it's, it's, it, it is um, giving you an accurate representation of what you're expecting from the software. But that's part of the joy, I guess, of CNC control and, and, and machining is it's not just you get your machine, you plug it in, you press go, it works. Right, that's cool. That if lots of people are, are familiar with laser cutting or, or 3D printing, not so much, but it's relatively easy. You could teach someone laser cutting in a day and they'd happily do it. CNC machining is this, there's so, so much to learn about the types of um, milling bits you need to cut different materials, how quickly you'd like to do that, um, what materials are suitable, what to look out for, what lubricants to use. Um, but it's popular. It's getting trendy now. This, it's called Pocket NC. I challenge anybody. <laughs> I, I, I have a bit, it, it's as pocket sized as the Raspberry Pi is credit card sized, I think I'm gonna say. But it's lovely though, I mean look at it, it's, it was kickstarted. It's a pricey bit of kit, it'll set you back three and a half thousand US dollars, but it's, it's pretty cool. And they have a YouTube video of it milling a small V8 block out of aluminium, which is, looks pretty cool. Um, lovely machine, I believe it's five axis, controlled with machine kit with a beagle bone, uh, beagle bone black, and yeah, lovely. Um, that's kind of one end of the scale of the, what I'd still call hobbyist, I guess. Um, the other end is are these sorts of things. Um, there's loads of projects making your own DIY, CNC mill, um, Key things about mills really is it needs to be solid and sturdy. It needs to be sturdier than the stuff you're machining. Um, for this one, I guess the build for this would be probably a couple of hundred quid, maybe, unless you can, if you get the motors out of a photocopier or something, you, know, you can find bits. Often they have Dremels as the head, but this one's got a motor there and it's coupled to a bit and presumably the bit somewhere down there. Again, he's got a dial gauge, so uh, at least he looks like he knows what he's doing. Uh, oh yeah, and I, th I thought I'd best prove that we had actually milled some aluminium on our machine and it was working. Um, again, this is part of my transition from laser cutting and lots of things to cutting things out of metal. It's, I haven't designed a lot in 3D CAD and this is a whole other world of things. It's like, okay, you need to design things in 3D and go from a, a 3D model into something which will move your machine around. So I'm taking it slowly. I started cutting things out of sheet, as you know, still relatively 2D. Um, and that's one of the first things we did, which is uh, it's a mounting plate for a, for a D-sub connector, but it's out of aluminium and it's, it's there and it's solid and it, it all came out the right size and the right scale. So yeah, it's great fun, but there's, there's loads to learn and um, I'm, we'd love to talk to you more about that um, as we go on. I, ri I wrote the, this project up as a series of three posts, which will probably have a lot more detail uh, than I, I squeezed in today. If you go onto the information superhighway, and search for Design Spark CNC milling, they're the first three hits on it. Um, and that's the end of the talk. And um, ask me some questions if you have.